Cena, the main roster WWE superstar, has been moved to NXT, and a major free agent looks set for a huge AEW appearance. But first, AEW have booked a very interesting location for a very interesting show. According to a tweet from French-Canadian broadcaster Patrick Leprade, according to a tweet from French-Canadian broadcaster Patrick Leprade, All Elite Wrestling is set to make their debut in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, with Dynamite, Rampage, Collision, and Ring of Honor all set to be held inside the Bell Center. And the tweet reads, I spoke to multiple sources and AEW would like to make its long-awaited Montreal debut on December 5th and 6th at the Bell Center. Wednesday will be Dynamite and Rampage and the Tuesday show should be Collision and ROH. AEW is currently doing a Canadian tour. Of course, historically in wrestling, Montreal is perhaps most synonymous with the Montreal Screwjob in November 1997, where Bret Hart would be double-crossed in order to take the WWF Championship away from him before his impending jump to World Championship Wrestling. Within AEW, there is currently a similar situation unfolding, with the reigning AEW World Champion MJF teasing a jump to WWE once his contract expires in January 2024, just weeks after the upcoming Montreal tapings. Interestingly, MJF has mocked AEW President Tony Khan for running out of options to take the title away from him, with the company perhaps set to pay homage to the Montreal Screwjob this December. But do you think we're going to see the Montreal Screwjob 2.0 this December? Let me know in the comments down below. And speaking of event locations, the venue for the upcoming WWE Survivor Series has been revealed. Earlier today, WWE would take to their corporate website to reveal the whereabouts of their upcoming Survivor Series premium live event, which will be held on Saturday, November 25th, with it set to go down in the city of Chicago. The statement would reveal that both SmackDown and Survivor Series will take place inside the Allstate Arena on back-to-back -back nights. WWE last held a premium live event, or pay-per-view, in the Allstate last June for Hell in a Cell, whilst having also held an episode of Monday Night Raw there in April of this year, which was the taping that CM Punk showed up at backstage during his AEW hiatus. And before we carry on, let me just quickly promote the latest upload on the Wrestle Planet Gaming channel, where we discuss 10 AEW stars that are missing from Fight Forever, and what this means for the future of the video game. And next, Roman Reigns has been unbanned from TikTok. Last night, we would discuss a situation involving TikTok and undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, who had been mysteriously banned from the platform due to unknown reasons. Whilst the reasoning was a mystery, fans were speculating that the ban may have been linked to TikTok's simulated violence policy. With that said, and much like we suspected, Reigns' profile is now back up, likely following communications from WWE, with him since posting a short video referencing the ban with the caption, can't get rid of me. The unbanning comes ahead of tonight's episode of Friday Night Smackdown, where Roman will face his cousins the Usos in the tribal court, as the trail of the tribal chief commences. Next up, we have an update on the health of an injured former WWE Champion. In March 2021, the New Day's Big E would suffer a neck injury during a belly-to-belly -belly suplex spot on the outside, with it later being revealed that he had fractured his C1 vertebrae and C6 vertebrae whilst avoiding any ligament or spinal cord damage at the same time. Speaking on the WWE After the Bell podcast this week, E would provide an update on his current health, and whilst he has yet to receive news on if he'll be able to wrestle again, he feels 100% and he would say, I feel great. Unfortunately, I don't have a timetable. The great thing is I feel 100%. I don't even feel like someone who broke their neck. My mobility is incredible and great. My strength is great. And I have no issues whatsoever. I wish I had some answers on returning to the ring. I have nothing, unfortunately, but the beautiful thing is I feel great. My body feels great. I'm really thankful for that. Life is good. I am blessed. I can walk around and touch my toes, go to the gym, all those things. Really grateful. Whilst his future in wrestling is unknown, it's great to hear that he's currently without issue in his day-to-day -day life, with that no doubt being the priority, with a potential wrestling return being a secondary thought in this situation. 
And next, another main roster star has been moved to NXT. In the 2021 WWE Draft, amateur wrestling Olympic gold medalist Gable Steveson would be drafted to the Raw brand before making his first appearance around six months later during one segment on each night at WrestleMania 38. With that said, Gable has only made one main roster appearance since then, this during Kurt Angle's birthday celebration in December 2022 of an episode of SmackDown with him not having actually worked a match inside a WWE ring. More recently, Steveson has made a cameo appearance on the NXT brand with him accompanying his real life brother Eddie Thorpe at ringside during this week's inaugural NXT Underground match, ending with Gable handing out several suplexes. While it looks like this appearance won't be a one-off, as according to Dave Meltzer in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Steveson is now listed as an official member of the NXT roster within WWE. The news follows Baron Corbin's recent move back to NXT, where he has restored his lone wolf persona, with more similar moves expected in the weeks and months ahead. But which main roster WWE superstar do you think needs a refresh in NXT? Let me know in the comments down below. And next up, a major free agent looks set for a huge AEW appearance. This week on AEW Dynamite, the field was set for the upcoming Blood and Guts match that will pit the elite's Kenny Omega, Hangman Page, and the Young Bucks up against John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, and Wheeler Yuta of the Blackpool Combat Club, as well as their ally, Kanosuke Takeshita. As well as this, both sides will have a fifth man on their team, with the partners currently remaining a mystery. According to a fresh report from Fightful Select, one of those those mysteries has seemingly now been revealed, as sources within the company are of the belief that former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion and former tag team partner of Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi, is set for the match, and the report notes, Fightful has confirmed that conversations have taken place between international star Kota Ibushi and All Elite Wrestling. Most of the talent we spoke to this week are of the belief that he would be joining the company in some capacity, specifically for the upcoming Blood and Guts show. AEW hasn't made an official announcement and he's not been nearly as public of late. The report adds that Ibushi's management has reduced upcoming media obligations, with them citing that his schedule will be picking up in the near future, a further hint that he could be AEW bound. On top of this, sources close to him in Japan have noted that Kota is in fact planning on working the upcoming AEW show. Fightful would also clear up any potential issue between All Elite Wrestling and New Japan were the former to work with Ibushi, as whilst he did leave New Japan on bad terms earlier this year, these issues have since been resolved and there is actually a New Japan contract offer on the table to bring him back. And if Kota were to sign with AEW, this would no doubt increase the chances of signing the elite to new contracts given their close ties to Ibushi, and particularly when it comes to Kenny Omega. And if Omega were to re-sign, that would make it more likely that the books would re-sign, which would make it more likely that Hangman would re-sign, with all of their current deals expected to expire by early 2024. And before you go, remember to check out 10 AEW's stars missing from the AEW Fight Forever video game.